Hello everybody, welcome back to Starhammer and Misk. Hope everybody have had a good holidays, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving. And apologies if this video went well, sorry, tongue twisted. I apologies I apologize that this video is a bit late. You know, because long story short, life happened and there were some things I gotta take care of, but now the video is here. So in this video I'm gonna talk about what is Warhammer 40k exactly? So there's other Warhammer 40k channels that did videos explaining in greater detail what it is. So some of the stuff I will say in this video will, will somewhat overlap. And also, we're not going into too much detail because one, this video would be like over an hour long, and also other channels have done a way better job in explaining playing for Warhammer 40k than I can but don't want to leave I'll put links in the description of those channels and those videos so what is Warhammer 40k so originally it started off as a tabletop game you see this is tabletop so start off as a tabletop game RMPG and this was Warhammer 40k started back in the 90s. So the Warhammer you see today was very different from the Warhammer that started very early on. You know, because our this Warhammer tabletop has what's called you know miniatures, which is not only used for just you know for you know R R R N G gameplay, but also as miniatures that you can paint and so the tabletop have what is called a codex because basically it's a rule block explaining the rules you know yes they have tournaments and things like of that nature which explains you know what you do what not to do and there's a codex for for each faction in Warhammer for the key the space marines chaos space marines blood angels tau how Dark Angels, Chaos Knights, and etc. etc. And over the years, you know, especially the more recent years, this guy, Warhammer for the K has expanded in popularity, this franchise, because so, it started, you know, over in the UK. And now it's really worldwide. Right. So Warhammer for the K, you know, in universe because I just explained what it is outside of the universe but in universe is the story of a very realistic universe a universe where there is no black or white everything's a gray area so there's no heroes or villains in this universe everybody is more or less a manta hero and so the universe itself is very large and expansive. There's multiple galaxies within this universe, you know. Not to mention there's also time travel, which makes things very complicated. I'll talk about I might talk about time travel in a separate video, but it is but that is very complicated. Not just in Warhammer 40k by itself, but just anywhere in general. Right. So this is a universe where basically there is, you know, humanity and there's also basically aliens or everything that's not human, which is put in very simple terms, known as, you know, Xenos. You know, so basically Xenos are just the alien races. And this is an orc. The green skins. So different. There's the Tau. And there's little snippets. This is only it. But there's some there's like a multitude of like Xeno races, so he says so they can't be covered in one video and also 
I'm still debating whether to cover Xenos because personally Xenos is not my personal favorite. And Xenos does not get as much attention as as the other elements and species within the universe. So this is the universe where basically how it all started was, you know, the universe happened and then it was the sentient Xenos, like the old ones, the Necron tier. Here later on there's the Eldari and then there's the War in Heaven and when it happened it created what is called the actions of evil and malice and of creating a rip in the universe which is also known as the warp and you can see all of basically how chaos was kind of created see the warp so warp is basically kind of outside of space and time and yes I'm I'm just trying to simplify for those who are not very familiar with this universe so this is also you know where the chaos demons lie it's also where time travel happens and you know time travel is very complicated and also it was also created as a result A result of the Xenos actions, more specifically the Eldari, the Chaos Gods were created. These are the four main Chaos Gods. There is Corn, the Chaos, the Chaos God for blood, blood, anger. And malice there is the chaos god nurgle which is a plague disease the chaos god slanesh which was the last chaos god that was um created is in you know, the chaos god of pleasure and there's zeech the god of magic or magic or sorcery exception there's also chaos undivided as well And so many millennia pass. And eventually what came to be is that humanity or these shamans realizing that you know oh crap oh crap these chaos gods will be a threat to the human race because the shamans were in a way they're sort of like the closest thing to like a guardian slash hero in the universe one of the few things that are the closest things to the to heroes in the Warhammer 40k universe and so they knew they couldn't keep this up for ever with their psychic powers and so their psychic powers to the shaman sacrifice themselves to create a being a demigod known as the emperor of mankind and he is one of the oldest um, characters in the Warhammer 40k universe He's demigod because you know he still looks youthful after like thousands of thousands, yes, literally thousands of years. To them, and no, the emperor of mankind does not have an actual name. That's all. That's just how he's known as. However, the chaos gods refer to him as Anathema. 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 So what is so what the Emperor's plan was is to he created what's called the Unification Wars where basically he tries to unite the whole galaxy under one rule under his Imperium. And yes, this Imperium is in political terms very conservative, very authoritative Imperium. So, you know, first man, Mankind did it himself, and later he created um, the Thunder Warriors, which is basically a prototype of what he's going to create later on to help him establish the unification of the universe. But the Thunder Warriors were 
you know, like I said, uh, prototype. So, so these are the Thunderwares. This is what they kind of look like. Of course, they weren't very stable, so to let the Emperor Man kind of had to more or less get rid of them. If they didn't get rid of themselves already. And yes, if I make any errors, please let me know in the comment section below. And yes, I'm just oversimplifying this. Warriors. So when that project kind of flopped, the Emperor Man kind of tried again and he created his genetic sons, who will be later known as the Primarchs. He created 20 genetic sons through a laboratory. And he was going to raise them and train them. But unfortunately the Chaos Gods intervene. Because they realized that oh crap the Emperor of Mankind. Is a threat especially if he is with his Primark. So they were able to steal all the air. All the pods that all the Primarchs were in and separate them to different planets. So there were 20 Primarchs and there are two of them kind of lost and they were basically erased through our history. So the Primarchs knew what happened to the two lost guys but it was forbidden to ever mention those two ever again. As far as to what happened to their legions, it is theorized that they have joined the other space memory factions. You know, the armies of the Primarchs. Specifically, Rabuti Gilliman's Ultramarines. But like I said, that's a theory. Hmm. So we have all of the Warhammer 40k Primarchs. So the Ferris Magnus, the Primarch of the Iron Hands, Perturabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, Fulgrim, the Primarch of the Emperor's Children, Rugal Dawn, the Primarch of the Imperial Fist, Dragon Khan, the Primarch of the White Scars, Alfarius and Omegon, the Primarch of the Alpha Legion, Lionel Johnson, the Primarch of the Dark Angels, Demon Russ, the Primarch of the Space Wolves, Comrade Hers, the Primarch of the Night. Lords, Angron, the Primarch of what is now known as the World Eaters, Sanguinius, the Primarch of the Blood Angels, Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders, Rubuti Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, Magnus the Red, the Primarch of the Thousand Suns, and last but not least, Logar, the Primarch of the Word Bearers. So those are the AT Primarchs. You know, things were going well. They were, you know, the Emperor's Great Crusade. To go about, you know, create the universe for the better. He, the Unification. In addition to the Unification Wars. He also was creating what is called the Golden Throne. 
though in order to basically seal off chaos so oh my apologies there's a prime mark I forgot I forgot was or the prime mark um Korax the prime mark of of the Raven Guard Let's see let me double check to make sure that I got them all. Oh gosh, I forgot like two more. Yeah, Corvus Corvax, the Primark of the Raven Guard. Mortarion, the Primark of the Death Guard. And last but not least, Horus Slupercal, the Primark of the Lunar Wolves, later known as the Sons of Horus. So yeah, those are the all all the Primarchs. So yes, the Greek Curse was going well, and Emperor's making the Golden Throne just to, you know, a way to s travel the way safely while having to deal with chaos. Because the, because Emperor Mankind's goal was not necessarily to destroy chaos, but to basically diminish the influence in a way so that chaos wouldn't go strong. Was strong in their influence of humanity and what's very interesting is that the emperor of mankind is actually atheist despite the fact that he himself was is basically made of mystic energy thus making him a demigod like the emperor of mankind like the Emperor of Mankind is very powerful, but he is not, I repeat, he is not immortal. He he can be killed. And so what ended up happening is that as just when things were going well, the Emperor did some oopsies. Right, and then half his sons turned traitor. And a civil war started. Civil war ensued. Because the chaos got influenced. The emperor of mankind's favorite son. Horus Lupercal. To join chaos. Chaos and. The civil war would become later known as the Horus Heresy. Yeah. So, yeah, even though it's named after Horus, Logar was actually the first one to become a heretic, so to speak. See, the difference between Logar and Horus Lubrical was that Logar Aurelian, when he turned to chaos, he, he kept it kind of incognito about it. Well, Horus Lubrical just made it very obvious that, oh, he turned traitor. So, hence why it was named... Why it was named after Horus the Brickell, not Logar. And so chaos ensued. And Magnus the Red tries to warn the Emperor by using the psychic energy, but the psychic power was was banned from the Council of, of Nicrea. Sorry if I'm butchering the name correctly. The Emperor banned it because banned the use of psychic power because he knew what would happen. Knew the effects of using psychic powers because it would open the webway and the chaos would be unleashed. And the, the mistake on the Emperor's part was that he kept his sons out of the loop of what he was doing. If he told them why he was doing what he was doing, that would make more sense. But the Emperor didn't do that, so the Magnus used his psychic powers to warn the Emperor. But as a result, he really... So he ended up destroying, messing up the Golden Throne, and then the Emperor's project is basically ruined. And there's this whole saying of like Emperor, 
Magnus did nothing wrong, but in a way, I personally believe he did do wrong, but it was not intentional. Unfortunately, Magnus ends up becoming the influence of the Chaos Gods to Sinch. Which is kind of ironic. So all the Primarchs, you know, that's just, you know, before the Horus Heresy up to the 41st millennia, have what's called Space Marines, and Space Marines are genetically enhanced super soldiers, and they would share Gene Seeds. So Gene Seed is not necessarily actual genetics, but it's basically, you know, how we have our organs, you know, like heart, liver lungs that kind of thing so those are considered gene seeds to that's how they make the super soldiers through gene seeds that are compatible to other people okay. and as far as for the chaos space marines you know right because of the influence of the warp they often take this big disfigured appearances very demonic presence and there are times where they could not s sustain presence in the material realm you know the Ukraine universe or the genetic or they'll be unstable that they wouldn't unstable to the point where they would have to go back to the warp or because they would not be able to maintain the material realm with those who fell to chaos, the Chaos Space Marines, they ended up, the Gene Scenes War became corrupted. Now, it doesn't mean that Gene Scenes didn't work or stop functioning. The Gene Scene was just corrupted by the demonic influence. And because of the demonic influence, it's very difficult to find compatibility. Unless they steal gene seed from, you know, the loyalist chapter or make someone from scratch, but you know, we might talk about that in a different video. So, you know, the thing was that when Horus had this Black Crusade, they didn't come up with a contingency plan or a backup plan because it was thought that, you know, they would just win the first time. Win and defeat the Emperor of Mankind. But they didn't, and as you can see, this is the final battle between Rebellious Son and Rex's father. As a result, so this is a bit of a spoiler, basically, the Emperor technically wins, but Horus ends up dead, and the Emperor Mankind is severely wounded, and as a result, he's basically stuck on life support, because... Because of his condition. So in order for him to stay alive, he is placed on life support on the golden, on the golden throne that was originally created to help mankind travel the web way properly. And there's theories that the, you know the emperor mankind reincarnated into a different body, but you know that's a whole theory for another time. So as you can see, yeah. So in a way, he's technically alive, but psychically, so. In order to basically keep the Golden Throne, you know, the life support running, thousands of people had to be sacrificed in order for the Emperor of Mankind to basically maintain alive. Okay. So thousands of years passed because, you know, the Horse Heresy happened in the 31st millennia. Well, like, the 31st millennia is like the year 30,000. 
to the 31,000. And what ends up ironic was that in the modern Warhammer 41st millennia, is that the Imperium went from upholding the Imperium truth to end up worshipping the Emperor, despite the fact that by the fact Despite the fact that it was obvious and recorded that the Emperor did not want that to be the case. He never wanted to be worshipped as a god. Okay. You know, was there interesting because Lorgar was like the first one to technically worship the Emperor as a god. But the Emperor was against this and that's how Lorgar became tr And as a result of, you know, the, that dispute between Lorgar and the Emperor... Logar became a traitor, but that's a story. But that's a whole separate video. Uh, as in the current 41st millennia, the Imperium is from the inside, it's dying. Not necessarily because of the worship of the Emperor of Mankind, but because of the corruption, corruption, and how the system is created, etc. Then you know the chaos is still out there and exists. And this is the ongoing battle, not to mention with the battle of the Xenos. Just for the control uh just to make the Imperium whole once again. Okay. And it, that's more or less a summary slash synthesis of Warm 40k, what it is and what's happened in the current universe. But there was others. There are other YouTubers who explained it way better than I can. So that's what Warhammer 40k is. And like I mentioned in the intro video. Everything in the universe happens very slowly. And this is not something for anybody. You have to have a certain personality. In order to really. I guess enjoy and appreciate Warhammer 40k. And willing to digest the kind of stuff that's in there. And the stuff that's in Warm 40k is nothing there's nothing nice about it. Everything is horrible. It's a it's an over the top dystopia. But that's the reason why it's all it's enjoyable all the more. Okay. Versus anything I missed, versus anything else I could have added. So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, apologies for the video being a little late. And for the video being like almost 30 minutes long. But since it's an intro and there's a lot of Warm 40k. You know, a video like this would be kind of long. But hopefully I'll try to make the videos in the future a lot shorter. So that's it for this video. Until next time.